here we have the Bitstreamer 2. Got dip switches for the uh, memory addresses of the ports. Three serial chips. Uh, I'm not actually sure which one of these is the real time or the parallel. The system bus provided plus 8 volts and plus and minus 16 volts. Uh, these are all TTLs, so we have a couple voltage regulators to drop it down to 5 volts. We have the ZCB. We have got N8255. This provides the three parallel uh, ports. Uh, actually, it could be four. It be um, three eight bit parallel or two eight bit and one, or sorry, two eight bit and two four bit. Now uh, you combine the two four bits to one eight bit. Uh, we have the Z80, the system monitor prom. This is the serial. The Z80 that I have here, uh, and it's not obvious. Uh, because you can't really read it too clearly, but this is actually a much newer Z80. Uh, you can still buy these. Z80s are everywhere, which is extraordinary. Uh, and this is a unit that's capable of doing 6 megahertz, although the oops, Boyd's keeps it to 4. The original Z80 in this was actually damaged, and I could not for the life of me wake it, make it work. After I modified up the flash writer, I would get a screen full of garbage. And what I eventually worked out was that the um, flash writers have uh, its uh, memory mapped video. So uh, at a specific point in memory you write you know, the letter A and the letter A would appear on the screen. And the garbage was the fact the PROMs weren't being initialized, or the, sorry, PROM, the static RAM wasn't being initialized. So the random noise that was in the static RAM on power up was getting translated through the character ROM and dumped to the screen. So it was just gibberish. Uh, I ended up buying my logic analyzer, which is over there, for this machine. Oh god! And there goes the case that I've stepped on. Um, the... Where the hell was I? Oh, logic analyzer, right. So we hooked it up to the original board to try and work out what it was doing, and it just it wasn't functioning. You know, we would get the uh, initial C3, which is decoded to a jump, so that's it jumping to the ROM, but then, you know, it all went south from there. We could not work out what it was. And it turned out the Z80 was damaged. Uh, I had this that I had bought for another project, brand new. I think a 6 meg Z80 cost like 6 bucks. Um, so I dropped it in here and like that, off it went. And an FD again, got our power regulators. I had a look and I'm wrong. I only have three flash riders. So. Whether this is an enhanced model and it has an extra board and the 503 Ford does not mean that it had four terminals, or whether I'm just missing a flash rider is entirely possible. The uh, flash riders, um, what I neglected to mention was, uh, as I was talking about, you know, the fact they were built for anybody who wanted to drop video support into their S100 machines. The options available were extraordinary, not only the composite, but, uh, for example, the keyboard you had, like I said, it was parallel ASCII, which, you know, at the time that these were out, every keyboard out there that, you know, you just sort of bought was parallel ASCII, so it was nice and easy to find. Uh, and even if it was parallel serial, you just used a um, register latch to dump it to parallel. But the um, ability to say the rate the keyboards comes in, uh, the signals come in, uh, whether you read it on the rising edge of the strobe signal, the falling edge of the strobe signal, on the uh, top of the signal, whether you have the ZC ZCB strobe, or sorry, pull for it, so it constantly checks a buffer and when there's a character there then it pulls it out and, you know, that's a keyboard input, or whether you want the flash writer to generate an interrupt when a key is pressed and, you know, what address that interrupts on, things like that. Um, all of this was configurable with dip switches, which is, uh, actually I think they were um, pad jumpers, but, you know, you could use this for any machine, you could configure it up to work with any machine, just drop it in. Really magic. Um, let's see what's next. Oh, why don't we turn it on? It'd be a good thing, wouldn't it? Okay, so we're back. I discovered that I had managed to uh, snap one of the solder leads off my PS2 heater here, so I had to do a bit of surgery. Uh, I know it looks like a dog's breaks, there's cables, but it's not too bad. We have our DB25, which carries the uh, keyboard signals to my AVR breadboard. We're supposed to get 8 volts off this, and I should be able to power this, but the fuses on the back plane went, and I haven't bothered replacing them yet, so I'm running it off 
a 9 volt wool wart here and I've got a little power circuit up at this end. We've got our composite video cable here which is going to these RCA cables that go to my Commodore 1084S that is wound up. Keyboard's plugged in. Theory. And you should be able to hear the fan come up and see how quickly the system actually comes to monitor. So what was that? Half a second? So there we are. Vector graphic. Uh, and we can test the memory. Uh, what we This is um, built-in test routines to a while at the RAM, see if it gives any errors. So we're going to test the graphics board area. And what will happen is, and the screen will fill with junk, there we go. And so what it's doing right now is it's just taking random stuff, throwing it at the static RAM on the flash writer. And uh, this of course is being translated to nonsense. As I said before, it will uh, decode what's in RAM through the uh, graphics ROM, or the character ROM, and just dump it at the various places in memory, or in the screen rather. And it's just constantly cycling through. Okay, so I know it's not very exciting, but there you have it. But the problem is, is go reset it. And you can hear it. Try it again. It's trying to access, but no matter what goes in that drive, it doesn't start. I have proper uh, vector graphic boot disks for this machine. A friend of mine, uh, also on the graphics list, the vector graphic list, sorry. Uh, made me a whole bunch of discs once I sent him some hard sectors, because of course they're so rare and I was lucky to find I had a set. And no soap. Uh, I've also tried booting off the hard disc. Um, that was back before it sounded like somebody had thrown a sack of ball bearings into a dryer. And uh, also, no go. Whenever it tries to boot, it throws the same load of junk into the area of memory where the boot sector is supposed to be read off the disc gate. Uh, and it doesn't matter what kind of disk you put in there, it's the same junk. So it's obviously not reading it. Um, but I have yet to work at what it's up to. I don't have a, a disassembled dump of the 5.0 ROM. The 4.0 and the 4.3 you can get in the Vector Graphics manuals. The 5.0 must have been uh, late enough that they really don't have any manuals either put out or that exist anymore. Uh, and I could disassemble it in memory, but... Uh, well, actually, that's the last option. I probably will end up doing it if I can't get that to work. Um, what I'm trying to do right now is other people have made dumps of these, and you can use uh, SimH to make a simulated vector graphic. So, and they also have like um, simulated flash writer drives, uh, devices as well, which is fantastic. Uh, thanks to also a bunch of vector people. Um, I think in particular Howard Hart was the one that did the bulk of the work, and then Peter Shorn. Uh, packed it together for a SimH kit, but uh, and I apologize to anybody if I got those names wrong. But um, what I think we'll do is we will put the 5.0 ROM on the SimH, set debugging to its maximum level, and there's that bloody cover again, and then see what the SimH version does when it's supposed to boot from disk, and then compare it to this. Uh, plus, of course, that'll give me a working ROM that I can stick to my PC and run through a Z80 dis disassembler, which would be kind of handy. Well, uh, I guess that's about it. Z80 mainframe. Um, I'm not sure I will bring you next time, but hopefully it'll be interesting as this. Thank you very much. I appreciate all of your comments, and uh, I hope you have a great day.